You go first, you go first. <laughs> don't, don't. Please uh, state your name and where you're from. Mila, mm -hmm. and I'm originally from China. Yeah, uh, but you, this seems like there's a but after that. <laughs> Yeah, I'm originally from China, but... But I came here when I was three. When you were three? Yeah. Ah. <laughs> was that a Chinese word I just said? Almost. Yeah, yeah. Do you speak, is it Mandarin or Cantonese? Uh, Mandarin. Mandarin, I see. Yes. <laughs> Unfortunately, I only speak Cantonese. <laughs> So it can never be between us. So that's it. What part of China are you from? Changchun. Oh, yes. Have you been there? Not yet. No. Have, have you been back since you came here? Yeah. D d uh, what's it famous for? Uh, being freezing and dumplings, probably. <laughs> Are you sure that's not Scotland? It sounds like Scotland. So where do you live now? Um, in LA. LA? Yeah. What did you do for a living? I'm a PhD student at the film school at UCLA. Wow, that's fantastic. <laughs> Thank you. Soon you'll be a doctor of film. Yeah, supposedly. Is that what you, you want to be a director? Uh, I would love to, but for now I'm just studying. Right, yeah. right. Got a boyfriend or a girlfriend or anything? Yeah, I got a boyfriend. He's in the audience too. Oh yeah, you a film student too? Uh, no, no, design student. Design student. Yeah. All right, <laughs> ditch him. Ditch him. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, good news. I'm going to send you kids off to a restaurant that CBS are going to pay for, not a Chinese restaurant. <laughs> Thank you. There we go. Hold on a second. I, your completely believable applause, I can't hear. What? <laughs> Locanda Veneta. Locanda Veneta. Oh, it is a Chinese restaurant. Sorry. <laughs> no, it's a great restaurant. It's Italian? Yes, it's Italian. Ah, Do you like Italian food? Too. Yes, I love it. How about your boyfriend? Does he like it? Yes, he'll eat anything, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, in that case, perhaps you should hang on to him then. <laughs> Sponsored by IHOP's new Brioche French Toast. It's Amour at First Bite. Ladies and gentlemen, Craig Ferguson. Absolutely, totally believable in every way. In no way was that forced out of you. Sit down, please, relax. I, I think the audience here are frightened into doing this. The warm-up comedian, we call him a comedian, he's not really a comedian. The warm-up! The warm-up guy, I think he's frightening the audience. Give me thunder! Give me thunder! He says that to them. 
down. He says that before I come out, I hear him backstage. He's like, give me thunder or you will die. <laughs> it's kind of like Game of Thrones. <laughs> I'm saying that. I haven't watched it. Do you watch Game of Thrones? No, I don't watch that. I, I, I keep meaning to watch it because everybody goes, oh, it's great this week. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I like it too. <laughs> It's really awesome, you should see it because there's things, and apparently there's a lot of boobies in it. Did you know yeah, that? a lot of boobies. A lot of boobies yeah. in the Game of Thrones. I'm like, oh, I don't know why I'm not watching it. <laughs> and I try and watch it, and then I'm like... <laughs> I've reached a point in life where naps are more important than boobies. <laughs> Is that true? It might be true. I might actually, like, if there's boobies over there and a nice, comfortable place to sit over there, I'd, I'd be like, uh, okay. <laughs> Can I see the boobies from the chair over there? I mean, I just said, I'm... Also, the good thing is you're allowed to watch the boobies in Game of Thrones because they're intellectual boobies. It's not just like, boobies! It's like, it's like, it's, it's boobies like, oh, I can see, there's a plot line. Look at the boobies, look at the boobies. That, see, that's the guys that are watching it. They're like, they're like, oh, yeah, look at the boobies, look at the boobies. Oh, the story's amazing, isn't it? It's like a time in history when things, oh, look at boobies. Oh, boobies. <laughs> Intellectual boobies. Intellectual yes. boobies, yeah. Boobies that know more things than you do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, it, it's a great day for America, everybody. Yeah. Now, let me say... Let me say, before I continue, though, not such a great day for America's sweetheart, Reese Witherspoon. <sighs> Reese, I'm disappointed. <laughs> and she was arrested on Saturday uh, in Georgia for heckling a police officer who pulled over her husband. She was, in fact, legally bombed. Reese Witherspoon. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear that? That yeah. was nothing. Yeah, nothing. No, that was, that's very rare to get. <laughs> I went from our audience who were frightened into, hell, we're not scared enough to laugh at that. <laughs> legally bombed? You expect us to laugh at that? What are you even doing? When are the boobies coming? Because oh, it's a good storyline, good storyline for boobies. <laughs> anyway, I love Reese Witherspoon. She's lovely. Even in her mugshot, she looks good. You got her mugshot? There she is. No! <laughs> Come on! That's Nick Nolte. Have you got Reese Witherspoon's mugshot? There she is. No! <laughs> it took us like 10 minutes to make that. <laughs> Using the CBS computer. The one computer. The one computer, yeah. yeah. You have to wait for it to go... <laughs> it, <laughs> it sounds very like a lot of people who watch CBS. You turn it on and it goes... <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, that was Reese Witherspoon there. Show me it again. Yeah, that's it. Now, so... <laughs> apparently, though, she was out of control. She was yelling at the cops. She was like, Do you have any idea who I am? <laughs> I didn't know I could do Reese Witherspoon. Wow, that's really good. Hey, I can do Reese Witherspoon. I don't mean I can do Reese Witherspoon. I mean I can actually. Yeah, yeah. No, I don't. I don't mean that. No, well. I mean I mean I can I can imitate her voice almost perfectly. I'll do it again. Give me an idea who I am. Really good. It's like she's in the room and legally bombed. <laughs> that's when she yelled at the cop. Can you do Reese Witherspoon? Give me an idea. Who I am. I yell the same thing at the audience here every night. Give me an idea who I am! And they're like, no. We're just scared of the warm-up comedian. They call him a comedian. He ain't really a comedian. <laughs> hey, did you know that there are rumors that Selena Gomez and Justin Bieber are back together? I'm like, oh. I just want that adorable little girl to be happy again. And maybe Selena will get something out of it too. <laughs> you see what I did? Yeah. You see what I did? <laughs> Made the horse dance. <laughs> oh crap, I was going to talk about Earth Day. It's Earth Day today. <laughs> Here, 
here's how well thought out this show is. My plan, when I heard the, 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 we say, right, give me thunder! Before I came out, I thought, oh, I'll say, it's a great day for America, it's Earth Day, that's what I'm going to say. Now, I've been out here for seven minutes, and I've just said it. <laughs> You got a graphic for Earth Day? Ah, ah, ah. ah, right. That's why we couldn't get the computer earlier on. <laughs> Some, someone was doing that. The hell was that, man? Yeah, well, you know, the earth uh, burst open and I came out. We're gone like this. Ah. <laughs> and uh, it's as close to the Game of Thrones as you'll ever see on CBS. <laughs> Let me see it again. Have you, can you play the graphic? Oh, wow, it's there again. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think that's pretty like Game of Thrones. I th Apparently, bit, yeah. that's like Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones is a bit like that. <laughs> So if you're wondering what all the fuss is about Game of Thrones, you've kind of seen it now. <laughs> Game of Thrones, a Scottish guy with wings flying out of the Earth's core. That's Game of Thrones. I think that was the pitch when they originally pitched it. You is know? that right? Yeah, yeah. When they were pitching the show, you're like, well, it's a show about a Scottish guy with wings and he flies out of the Earth's core and they were like, I don't know. <laughs> And then they said, a lot of boobies are like, mm-hmm, okay, I'm listening. <laughs> Does it have bears in it? Does it have a polar bear in it? I feel like it should have a polar bear. It doesn't have a polar bear in it? Well, I'm not watching it then. <laughs> I like polar bears. What was that, what was that uh, thing that was out, that movie was out, there was polar bears in it? Uh, Daniel was... Craig? No, the, uh, no, no. Polar Express? No, there was a big movie, The Golden, the Golden Compass, Compass. Golden Compass. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and polar bears there played tennis or something in that movie, right? That's right, yeah. <laughs> Let me tell you something about polar bears you might not know, given this is Earth Day, polar bears are, are endangered, but you have to be careful because a polar bear is one of the few animals that will stalk a human, stalk them. Like, if you go to the, uh, where polar bears live, and then... <laughs> Oh, an intellectual booby knows, but I don't know. No, if you go to, you know, where, where polar bears live, and, and the polar bear sees you, it might stalk you, and it might, like, when you get the plane home, it could be a couple of rows behind you. Like, reading a, reading a, what, my microphone's not working? What do you, what do you mean, you just point? Do you just, like, say, cut or something? Just like, ah, your microphone's not working. Well, where did, I, where did it start? Uh, at the very beginning? Hello, everybody! I think what happened is that one of my intellectual boobies reached up and switched off. <laughs> uh, should we take a... Yeah. yeah. All right, I'll come over there, shall yeah, I? Yeah, come over here. I like All right. Come near me. <laughs> In honor of Earth Day, tonight's program will be made up of 100% recycled jokes, so it's business as usual. Some way, right? Crazy Jeff? Earth Day, man! Going crazy wow. Earth Day show where we're going crazy in some way. Yeah, we're recycling. what we're doing is pretending to be excited. We're not really excited. <laughs> it's a trick of television, along with telling you lies and <laughs> telling you lies mostly. <laughs> we like to tell lies in television, right, Jeff? Yeah, we're good friends outside of the show. Oh, Jeff and I hang together all the time. Oh, and by the way, that's a real horror. <laughs> and now the rest of the news. Do you remember when newsreaders used to do that? Yeah, yeah. That, uh, that's, uh, and that's tonight's observation for old people, everybody. <laughs> Got a graphic? Yeah. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Hold on. We also, we have a very old person work on the button for that. <laughs> Uh, 
enough. That's enough. We don't have time for any of that. What time is it, Jeffrey Pierce? It's tweet mail time. Time to take advice from a man who often says, Do you have any idea who I am during sex with himself? <laughs> That's correct, friend. <laughs> friend? Yeah. That, all right, thanks a lot. Friend, too. You got it, buddy. You got it, my friend. Je Je Jeff. Jeff, yeah. Jeff, yeah. Jeff. All right, this is from Lawrence and Ithaca. You ever been there? Love that place. We went there together. Together, yeah. <laughs> Hey, Craig and Jeff, my parents want to visit me at school, but I'd really just hang with my friends. Am I being a jerk? Yes! <laughs> oh, come on, Mom and Dad. I just want to hang with my friends. It actually sounds about right. Yeah, it sounds about right, actually. You're fine. Um, this is from Pear. In, uh, that's an interesting name, isn't Pear. it? Pear. Look how fine-looking man or woman Pear is. Oh. Pear is in Lulia in Sweden. Sweden? Sweden, yeah. Oh, we love Sweden. We can't do the accent, so we talk like this. <laughs> correct, Jeff? That's correct, Craig. That's correct. We can't do the Swedish accent, so we talk in a slightly German accent. <laughs> I'm sorry, but it's just the kind of low-budget things that we do around here. <laughs> correct, Jeff? We are just a pair of intellectual boobies. Yeah! I forgot to uh, read the email. Well, it's, this is too late now. This is from Omar. Omar be coming. Omar? Did you ever watch The Wire? Oh, uh, no. Oh, that was great. That was a great show. It was like Game of Thrones with no <laughs> movies in it. Uh, Omar, uh, he's from Riyadh in Saudi Arabia. Uh, dear Craig and Jeff, uh, please come to Saudi Arabia. You have a lot of fans here. <laughs> <laughs> we'll put it in the hopper, won't we, Jeff? We'll put it in the hopper. I have a feeling you'll be sending me. <laughs> <laughs> this is from Sal in Prospect Park, New Jersey. You ever been there? Sal, oh, Sal. what a place. Yeah. That's the place where the park seems to have prospects. <laughs> That was like the uh, legally uh, bombed joke earlier yeah, like on. That one, yeah. It was like, oh, God. Uh. <laughs> Dear Craig and Jeff, I woke up this morning to about 14 texts from someone I apparently met on Friday night, but I can't remember. Should I respond? No, you get your ass to rehab. Uh, <laughs> and finally, this is from Mandy in Winslow, Arizona. Uh, isn't that in that Eagle song? <laughs> I'm on a moron in a Winslow, Arizona. You're like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dear Craig and Jeff, I have, uh, I'm having a guy I've been dating for three weeks over to my place for dinner for the first time. What should I cook? Ooh, something sensual. <laughs> <laughs> what, would, what would you cook first time, first time over at your house? Oh, I think uh, steak tartare is appropriate. So, no, there's no cooking in steak tartare. Exactly. You just get steak and you go, there you are. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say eggs. <laughs> That's sensible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. eggs. <laughs> I made some eggs. They're fried. <laughs> I really wish I knew what was in that email from Sweden. Still sitting there, man. You could hang on to it till the end. I will. We'll be right back, everybody. We'll be right back. My first guest tonight is a very beautiful and talented actress. She stars in Two Broke Girls, Monday nights at 9 on CBS. Take a look at this. Here. Cat Dennings, everybody! Cat Cat. 
Matt, you do look nice. Do I? Yes, you do. Stop. You look very pretty yes, and actress. Not actressy, actually. You look Thanks. a bit more kind of. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> do you watch Game of Thrones? No, and you know what? We were just talking about this backstage. Backstage? And I didn't know you were frog. I was frog. <laughs> Yeah, no, I haven't seen anything, but I really like that girl's face. What girl's face? With the cute one with the dragons. I thought you hadn't seen it. I've seen her face. And it's, I really like that face. Oh, I tell you what, the, the, uh, that's the part I enjoy. <laughs> I haven't seen it. I think it's one of those things that I may, I'm going to, you know, wait until it's, you know, a whole bunch of them On stacked DVD. up. Yeah, that's it, DVD. And then... Is it still DVDs? I think it's not oh, anymore. Oh, it's not. It's just all... Look at your nails! You, we did this last time. I know, but you didn't have the last... same nails last time. You had different no, nails they're, last they're, time. Oh, I know. I did them myself last night just for you. Oh, that's very nice. Thank you very much. That's like Game of Thrones right there when you did that. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> Say, I thought you hadn't seen it, Craig. <laughs> I like it when you say my name like that, like a kind of accusing, kind of really? naughty, you're going to get spanked away. Uh, Craig. Craig, you're bad. I'm Craig, you're bad. I know, I'm so naughty. <laughs> You've got a horse on your show, but it's a I real do, horse. I do, I do, hi. They can't talk. What do you mean, they? <laughs> um, it's a real horse, though. Do, have you ever trained on a real horse? Yeah. Ah, right, see, so you have trained. Well, not like... Officially, I get on the horse and we ride around the lot. Do you really? Yeah, the, around the Warner Brothers lot. That sounds like I fun. feel really cool, too, because I'm, I'm like... I bet people are impressed. People are really impressed. There's, there's that actress on the back of that horse with no clothes on. <laughs> I added that bit to a make it more idea. like Game of Thrones. <laughs> Actually, they bring they bring a second horse for Beth if she wants to ride too, and it's like a blonde horse, and Beth is blonde, and it's like the blonde brunette horse that's like cute. <laughs> and this other horse's name is Taxi, and Rocky is the name of our horse, and they are lovers. Is that true, or are you just having some kind of episode? No. <laughs> It's true, their, their owner, Scott, their trainer, shout out, is a... Uh... What up? <laughs> I don't know, I don't know how to speak young people. Yeah! Adult swim, everybody! <laughs> that was like a bar mitzvah. Was it? Yeah, it probably was a little bit. Um, this horse, Taxi, and our horse, Rocky. So they're, they're, they're both uh, gentleman horses? They're boy horses. Have they got their um, testicles? Yes. Oh. Then they're both stallions? Uh, yes. <laughs> I like that voice. <laughs> I want to talk like this, too. Oh, God. If you have two stallions, don't they fight with each other? <laughs> nice to see you. <laughs> what a, no, you can't. They, one of them's got to be a gelding, surely. If you have two stallions, they'll go crazy. What's a geld? Is that a, a gelding's a horse that's had its uh, business uh, removed to a safe distance. <laughs> I don't know what the situation is with the... Well, take a peek the next time you're there. <laughs> the long story short, Craig, is mm. that You said Craig like that again. Yeah, you did. Just for you. Yeah, thanks. They're in love. Wow. They kiss. They sleep in the same barn. <laughs> You're making things up a little I bit. Said you? Yeah. I promise. That information. I how could how could they volunteer? They're like, no, not the horse. <laughs> the trainers. Oh, the trainer, Scott. Shut up. Scott. Because I asked if Rocky had a girlfriend. He's like, actually, I was a boyfriend. <laughs> Did you just do Scott's voice? <laughs> and Scott talk a little lot, please. Wait a minute. <clears throat> Does he like French fried potatoes? <laughs> Hey, who, who doesn't? I love French fried potatoes. Hey, me too, man. Well, uh, we have to take a break. What a shame. This was just rolling right along. I know, but, you know, commerce, TV, I the know. man. Yep. 
He'll get you every time. Yeah, I feel compromised in certain <laughs> areas myself. It's almost like you start off like a stallion and suddenly you're a gelding. <laughs> and you never even saw the snap. Oh. Real quick and not... Secretary, it looks mad. <laughs> Yeah, I know. <laughs> we'll be right back with Cat Dennings, everybody. Kelly's on again. Okay. Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back. I'm here with Cat Dennings. Ugh. I know. <laughs> you have this She's tough... lovely. She's very nice. She's got that kind of, you know, tough exterior, but then when you get in there... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I went too far there, didn't I? It got a little creepy and strange, didn't it? I know, I was just trying it's, something and... It's okay. Uh, sorry. No, it's cool. Yeah. Hey, I know some something terrible. <laughs> well, you better tell us it then. I know. All right, ready for this? This is terrible. Oh, I was just telling are you sure you want to tell us it then? It's really gross, but I just found out about it and okay. I'm really upset about it. Okay. Did you know people use ginger sexually? <laughs> no, Kat. Ginger's for an upset tummy. No. It's not for sex. <laughs> people use ginger in sexual ways? No. Yes. Well, they probably use it Gingerly. <laughs> well, how, how can you? I mean, it's it does not even shape like anything. Have you got one? <laughs> I don't want to go into it at all. You brought it up. <laughs> you mean here's something really bad? Really? Tell me about it. I don't want to go into it. I just found out about it, and it's all I can think about. <laughs> no, no, I don't want to do it. I'm just saying, but not at all. Little man. bit, baby. <laughs> little bit. Little bit of zesty. I don't know how you would possibly what shave to ginger. Shave ginger. <laughs> but you know what I mean, though. You get ginger and you shave and you shave you shave. This is what happens. I'm only gonna say it once, and then you can all think about it for a long time, like I have. <laughs> So, you, one, one would, uh... So you only use it if you're on your own? I haven't Googled it because I can't possibly risk seeing it. I think I can. People, people whittle it into different shapes. Okay, that's enough! You've been looking at my Facebook page? I don't have a Facebook page. I don't either. <laughs> Let's not be friends. <laughs> on Facebook, on Facebook. I'm so relaxed. <laughs> like, I just told you guys a really crazy bit of information. That has nothing to do with me. I just, like... Oh, yeah, it's not to do with you. <laughs> I yeah. just can't believe it, sort of, you know? Believe it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, by the way, the show's good, isn't it? Your show's great. Oh, right, okay, mine will do. Yeah, uh, cut down, everybody. Right, right, right. Please, I'm trying to read. <laughs> My next guest wrote this book. He's a best-selling author. He's written many international thrillers. The latest book is called Man Without a Breath, which sounds like the CBS computer, kind of. Please <laughs> <laughs> welcome a very talented Philip Kerr, everybody. Philip Kerr.
Thank you. First of all, may I say, that was an excellent little bow you did right well, there when you came out. It was terribly thespian, wasn't it? It was, it was good. It was kind of like, good evening. Yeah. I'm an author, but I also care about my appearance. <laughs> Very nice. It was, yeah. I'm a huge fan of your work. I've read all of these uh, Bernie Gunter novels. Well, all of them. Much. And this one included, which uh, is very rare look for me. It doesn't red, actually. It what? doesn't look particularly rare. I haven't read this one. No, I, uh, <laughs> I read another one. I assume that most copies, the words are all the same. Uh, I just shift them around, yeah. Right. I mean, like a jigsaw puzzle. Very, very good. Bernie Gunter, of course, he... Uh, <laughs> well, that's going to get in the way in the narrative, isn't it? It might. But uh, is that... That's quite like Reese Witherspoon on the front edge. Do you know who I am? They're very, uh, very. This is a very dark one. This one. This this one's about, very tough. No, I'm not talking. I'm talking about that book, Philip. It's very, it's very dark. It's very, very. Well, I mean, I was reading it. I was like, oh, oh, really? Oh. But well, I'm, it's, I'm a dark kind of guy. Really. Are you really? Are I you think very? Gloomy thoughts. Well, I'm a Scot, like you. You know. Yeah, you don't sound like me, though. We're a miserable lot. We are pretty miserable, apart from you. <laughs> well, I'm upbeat You're... because I'm. Well, I was You're... half in the bag for about 15 years. I think that did it. <laughs> But you're that, you know, a Scottish comedian, which is uh, rare. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Although when you're in Scotland, you you think most people were, wouldn't you? Comedians. Well, there's, there's very funny people in Scotland. Yes. Yeah, so, well, that's one word for it. <laughs> What's wrong, man? Is it, do you have a bad feeling about Scotland? Um, I think they got a bad feeling about me, actually. You know, when I was at school, people, you know, sort of wondered if I was a proper Scot because I was quite dark and a bit swarthy looking. So they, they thought I was sort of like an import. <laughs> Sounds to me like Edinburgh. It was Edinburgh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> In Glasgow, no one was bothered with any of that. You, I didn't always live in I lived in East Kilbride briefly, which oh, is near, yes. near Cumbernoddy. Yes, uh, that's where I'm from, yeah. Yes. <laughs> I see now Does why the books are so dark. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> do you go back often? Uh, I do, actually. I go back right. quite a bit now. What, to Cumbernauld or just Glasgow? Uh, Scotland. Right. <laughs> 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 now, listen, do you go back often? Uh, I go back once a year for the Edinburgh Festival. Uh, well, that's, the book festival. that's a month. Uh, no, it's one night, in my case. <laughs> okay. Um, just, anyway, listen, I'm, wanted, I'm promoting Do you want to talk about the book or not? I want to talk to you about the book. You're like, oh, Scotland, Scotland. I don't, never mind, we've been there. Uh, yeah, so, now, yeah, yeah. now, tell us about Bernie Gunter, because he's an interesting sort of anti-hero, but a lot of, very difficult for a lot of people, with detective, but... He's a detective who works in Nazi Germany. Right. And he um, is a an anti-fascist. He's slightly on the left. He doesn't uh, like the Nazis. Uh, but, but because he's a good copper, they, an efficient copper, they like, they like to use him. So yeah. consequently, he finds himself at the sharp end of, um, of Nazism, as it were. Yeah, uh, as many did. But the, uh, he, is, um, he works, not in, this, not in this book, but he worked for Heydrich uh, uh, at one point. Yeah, Heydrich, who was the so-called protector of Bohemia, but he didn't do a lot of protecting. Yeah, he was a very bad, bad gentleman. There was a lot of these Nazis were not very nice gentlemen at all. So, no. <laughs> so, I'm, well, but, so I believe it. But what I found uh, is that when I do read your books, that I find myself going to the CBS computer and Googling stuff. It's all fabulously accurate, this stuff. Of course. You, well, you no, research, no. The, do you go over there and go around? I do, it? yeah. I go quite often. I go, uh, go to Munich and Berlin a lot. I was in Munich a few weeks ago. In fact, I've been three times to Munich this year. I was surprised when I went to Germany because I was raised, I, uh, you know, we're about the same age, I think, and I, yeah. I was raised by a generation of people who remembered the Germans as Nazis. They were the same thing yes. to my parents' generation. And when I went to Germany, they were, I couldn't believe how nice and friendly and not like Nazis at all, no, everybody no. was. No. They were like, oh, welcome, yes, come over here, here's something funny, look at this! And, and, they, uh, and, they, all like, <laughs> and they all speak English. Isn't yeah, they, they were, well, they, they, in this sort of a way. Yeah, yeah but, but they speak better English than a lot of the English people do. And certainly and better certainly than a lot of Scottish people, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I was, I was really shocked because the German psyche, to me, seems very anti-Nazi, yet clearly, yeah. uh, you know... Well, I think uh, America and Britain did a really good job after the war of re-educating the Nazis. There was a, what was called a denazification process that right. went on. And uh, it, was, it worked brilliantly well, and um, apart from East Germany, of course, which... Uh, well, it was Britain, with the Soviet Union. Yeah, it didn't yeah. work there at all, so... Well, they, I mean, they're, they're, it's all Germany now. It's they're all, all Germany now. And everybody's cool? Everybody's cool. 
you know, especially in Munich, you know. Um, but Munich's in Bavaria, that's where it all started, isn't it? It is, yeah, and if you go to Munich, um, you can, I mean, you can visit Hitler's uh, apartment, as I did when I was there, obviously, it's on... He's not, he's not there. On, he's not there. Yeah. <laughs> Although I had a little, I, li I sort of pretended he was, because, you know, when I research my books, I try and behave a little bit like Robert De Niro and get into that kind of method acting. Really? Yes. Oh, yes, oh, yes. That's interesting. So I sort of waited outside his apartment building for the door to open, uh, and then I sort of walked in as if I belonged there and walked up the stairs to his front door and stood there and, and sort of half imagined what it would be like if I knocked on the door and... Um, <laughs> Guess what is it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm quite busy right now. <laughs> yeah. It's, how very strange. Are you, were you... Well, it is a strange. It's a strange It's thing. a very strange yeah. thing because, I mean, my, my recollect... My parents just... Just hated the Nazis, obviously, because they tried to kill them a lot. Well, they're, you they're know, good I mean, to hate. Huh? I mean, they are good to hate. I mean, yeah, and they, they make great villains. Yeah, uh, yeah, and, yeah. That, and that's possibly why the period is so popular with sort of movies and books. Is because uh, good and evil is it's a very clear cut definition in those days. I mean, the Germans made it really easy because they wore black uniforms with a little skull and crossbow. Yeah, there they are. There's information right there. Like you know, pirates. it's like you know, okay, we're going to wear black uniforms with skulls on them. <laughs> we're not the good guys. Yeah. <laughs> No, it's yeah. true. Well, it, it's fascinating. The, the book is, is just wonderful. The, the, uh, the collection of uh, the Berlin Noir trilogy was the first. Yes. Uh, three books. Uh, three it's a trilogy, books. of course. You know that. Yes. You wrote them. Um, <laughs> they're just fascinating. I, I'm a really interesting character. I, I love it. I, uh, are you on a book tour now? I am on a book tour, coast to coast. How's um, that going? American book tour. Well, I will say there's only one thing worse than doing an American book tour, and that's not being asked to do an American book tour. Yeah. <laughs> So coast to coast, I'm doing, you know, like 14 cities in sort of 18 days. Well, that's all right. Yeah, well, yeah. Americans will be very nice to you. They're very friendly people. They have been yeah. so far. Yeah. I'm an American. It's... Look at me. I'm being nice to you. You are? <laughs> yeah. In fact, you're the, you'd be nicer to me than anybody, right? Really? Yes. <laughs> but I'm offering you a, an, a, an alternative. I mean... No, 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 no. I'm, I, I like your work too much. Really fast. This one in particular, though, kind of had a go at me because you had the hero do something that I just could not agree with. Well, you know, I like and that was really hard. I like to uh, play with the idea of the hero because I think right. um, what makes him an interesting character to write about is that he doesn't always behave in an heroic way. Well, absolutely not. And Because yeah. um, it's dull. It's dull when people sort of, you know, are, are always good. It doesn't make for That's good, what I try to fiction. tell the producers here if I was good yeah. all the time. <laughs> well, I've, yeah. Well, I noticed all the spanking jokes. Here. Spanking jokes, yes. And also, were you here for the legally bombed joke? Because uh, that wasn't that good either. <laughs> But Philip, I, I wish you uh, luck in your American book tour. This is a, a spectacular piece of work. Your 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 writing is just uh, just wonderful. It's uh, very you. nice to finally meet you, Philip. Care, everybody, we'll be right back. Uh, two minutes over, so we just very quickly have to read the uh, email from Sweden that I didn't oh, yeah, read, remember? Yeah. All right, uh, that's from Per in Sweden who says, Dear Craig, would you consider bringing your show to Sweden? <laughs> I guess I'll be going.